In this lecture video, I am going to discuss about sinus rhythms and bradyarrhythmias. I am going to discuss about sinus rhythm, sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia and bradyarrhythmias. At the end of the lecture video, you will be able to identify sinus rhythms and how to differentiate sinus rhythm from junctional rhythms and how to identify and differentiate between sinus pause, sinus arrest and sinoatrial exit block. What is an arrhythmia? An abnormality in cardiac rhythm is called an arrhythmia. SA node is the predominant pacemaker of the heart and it depolarizes spontaneously. It is a modified cardiac muscle situated at the superior part of lateral wall of right atrium. The fibers of a SA node are continuous with fibers of atrial muscle. So once the impulses are generated, it spreads rapidly through the atrial muscle. The rate of sinus node discharge is controlled by autonomic nervous system. There are conditions which lead to sinus node dysfunction such as fibrosis, degenerative condition or ischemia of the sinus node. This leads to variety of arrhythmias commonly found in elderly and they may be asymptomatic or present with symptoms such as dizziness, palpitation or syncopal attack. Management depends on the patient's symptoms and may be by drugs to improve the heart rate or with permanent pacemakers. The point I want to stress upon here is it is vital to differentiate these rhythm abnormalities based on the ECG and to intervene early to prevent any life threatening conditions. Next point I, I, I am going to discuss is what happens if the SA node is dysfunctional or suppressed and what are subsidiary pacemakers and what is their role. If SA node is dysfunctional or suppressed in order to continue heart beating other subsidiary pacemakers in the AV node specialized conducting system and muscle may initiate electrical activation. But typically subsidiary pacemakers discharge at a slower rate. These are the various pacemaker sites and rate of depolarization. SA node depolarizes at a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. AV node depolarizes at a rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute and ventricles at a rate of 20 to 40 beats per minute. Before discussing about sinus bradycardia and sinus tachycardia, let me explain about sinus rhythm. What is sinus rhythm? If the depolarization begins in the SA node of the heart, it is said to be in sinus rhythm. In the ECG, P wave characterized by positive P waves in lead 2-3 AVF, negative P wave in AVR and biphasic P wave in V1. Next about bradycardia and how to differentiate sinus bradycardia with junctional rhythms. So, bradycardia is defined as heart rate less than 60 beats per minute in adults during wakeful state. Bradycardia results from either failure of impulse initiation or impulse conduction. Depressed automaticity leads to failure of impulse initiation. Asymptomatic bradycardia can be seen in people with high vagal tone such as in athletes. So, it is vital to differentiate bradycardia as whether physiological or pathological to intervene accordingly. So, there are many causes for bradycardia. There are some extrinsic causes and intrinsic causes. Extrinsic causes such as hypothyroidism, drugs, etc. And intrinsic causes are ischemia and infarction of the sinus node, fibrosis of the sinus node or sick sinus syndrome. Bradycardia may be due to sinus bradycardia, junctional rhythms or atrioventricular blocks. Now how to recognize sinus bradycardia and how to differentiate sinus bradycardia from junctional rhythm. So in this ECG, let us first calculate the rate. To do that, first trace the R waves. So here is an R wave, here is an R wave, in between there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 big boxes. So, 300 divided by 6 is equal to 50. The rate here is less than 60. So, it is bradycardia. Now, how to say sinus? There is a P wave which precedes the QRS complex and here is a P wave 
which precedes the QRS complex and there is a fixed PR interval. So, to say sinus, there is an upright P wave preceding the QRS complex and followed by a uh, P wave preceding a QRS complex. So, this is an example of sinus bradycardia. If there is no P wave preceding the QRS complex, then it is called junctional rhythm. Now, moving on to sinus tachycardia. When the sinus rate is accelerated more than 100 beats per minute, then it is called sinus tachycardia. Sinus tachycardia may be due to intrinsic sinus node abnormalities such as enhanced automaticity or due to abnormal autonomic regulation of the heart such as enhanced sympathetic tone or depressed parasympathetic tone. It is a secondary phenomenon and underlying causes to be investigation. There can be acute or chronic causes. Acute causes such as exercise, pain, anxiety, fever, acute heart failure, pulmonary embolism, etc. And chronic causes such as anemia, thyrotoxicosis, catecholamine, excess, etc. So, in this ECG, let us calculate the rate here. So, this is an R wave, this is an R wave. In between, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 9 small boxes. So, let us take 10. 1500 divided by 10 is equal to 150. The rate here is more than 100, so it is called tachycardia. Now, how to say sinus? There is a P wave which precedes the QRS complex followed by a T wave, then a P wave which precedes the QRS complex followed by a T wave. So, this is an example of sinus tachycardia. Then moving on to junctional rhythm. Junctional dysrhythmias originate in the AV junction that is area around AV node and bundle of His. Junctional rhythm is identified based on the rate which is usually less that is around 40 to 60 beats per minute as it originates from other than sinus node based on the QRS width which is usually normal as it follows the usual conduction system and importantly based on the morphology of P waves. This point I want to stress upon again that sinus P waves in lead 2 is upright or positive and junctional P waves may be inverted which comes before or after the QRS complex or it may be a hidden P wave. This picture explains about normal sinus conduction and about junctional conduction. So, based on the sequence of depolarization, there are several possible outcomes. So, these are some of the complexes here in that we can see various P wave morphologies. So, this is a P wave morphology which is negative which comes before the QRS complex and there is shortened PR interval. And here you cannot able to find a P wave and it is a hidden P wave here. And in this complex you can see a P wave which comes after the QRS complex. So, this P wave which is negative and before the QRS complex indicates that atria is depolarized from bottom up. And the hidden P wave indicates that atria and ventricles are depolarized simultaneously. And P wave which comes after the QRS complex indicates that AV node initiated depolarization, but ventricles depolarized just before the atria. Now, I am going to discuss about junctional rhythms such as junctional escape rhythm, accelerated junctional rhythm as well as junctional tachycardia. Junctional escape rhythm arises from AV junction at a rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute. It is characterized by heart rate around 40 to 60 beats per minute, rhythm which is regular and P waves which are inverted may appear before, during or after the QRS complex and QRS complexes are relatively narrow as is it usually follows the usual conduction system. If P wave is present, PR intervals will be shorter than normal. Let us take this example. First, let us calculate the rate. Here is an R wave, here is an R wave, in between there are 1, 2, 
3, 4, 5. There are 5 big boxes. So, 300 divided by 5 is equal to 60. The rate here is 60 and the rhythm is a regular rhythm and you cannot able to see a P wave here. So, there is a hidden P wave in this ECG and the QRS is normal as it follows the usual conduction system. This is an example of junctional escape rhythm. Next about accelerated junctional rhythm which arises from the AV junction at a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. It is due to increased automaticity of the AV node or decreased automaticity of the SA node which is characterized by rate around 60 to 100 beats per minute, a regular rhythm, P waves may be inverted appear before, during or after the QRS complex. QRS complexes are relatively narrow and P waves if present and the PR interval will be shorter than normal. Let us take this example. This is an R wave over here. This is an R wave over here. There are around 1, 2, 3 big boxes. So, 300 divided by 3 is equal to 100. So, the rate is 100. The rhythm is a regular rhythm and P wave which comes before the QRS complex and it is inverted and there is a shorter PR interval. And the QRS complex is normal as it usually follows the normal conduction system. This is an example of accelerated junctional rhythm. Next about junctional tachycardia. It is a fast ectopic rhythm arises from bundle of his at a rate more than 100 beats per minute. It is characterized by rate more than 100 beats per minute. A regular rhythm, P waves are inverted may appear before, during or after the QRS complex and QRS complex is normal. In this example, you can see R wave here and an R wave here and you can see 1, 2, 2 big boxes between 2 R waves. So, 300 divided by 2 is equal to 150. The rate is more than 100 and the rhythm is a regular rhythm and if you see the P wave, it has come after the QRS complex and the QRS complex is normal. This is an example of junctional tachycardia. Next, I am going to discuss about sinus pause, sinus arrest and how to differentiate sinus pause, sinus arrest from SA exit block. Sinus node consists of P cells or pacemaker cells which forms the impulses and T cells which transmit the impulses to the atrial muscle. Sinus pause is the failure of atrial activation due to inability of SA node to form impulses. This resulting in pause without visible P waves. The differentiating point between sinus pause versus sinoatrial exit block is that the pause is not an exact multiple of preceding PP interval. Sinus pause is characterized by absence of P waves for a duration of more than 1.5 seconds. If the delay is more than 3 seconds, then it is called sinus arrest. Let us take this example. In this ECG, there is a pause and if you take this PP interval, preceding PP intervals, the pause is not an exact multiple of preceding PP interval. So, if you calculate the number of boxes between the R waves, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, around 10 big boxes. So, 10 into 0.2 is equal to 2 seconds. So, the delay is around 2 seconds. So, this is an example of sinus pass. Seen in normal individuals with increased vagal tone, hypersensitive carotid sinus, drugs such as digitalis and inferior wall myocardial infarction. Next about sinoatrial exit block. As the name indicates, sinoatrial exit block is due to intermittent failure in conduction of sinus impulses into atria. The differentiating point between sinoatrial exit block from sinus pass is that 
the pause here is an exact multiple of preceding PP interval. Sinoatrial exit block is graded into 3 degrees, first degree SA block, second degree SA block and third degree SA block. First degree SA block, in this time for propagation of sinus impulse into atria is significantly prolonged. This cannot be directed on a surface ECG. Let us take this example. Top one is normal ECG and below is first degree SA block. If you compare the arrow marks of both ECGs, instead of atrial depolarization over here, it has been delayed. So, there is a delay in atrial depolarization. This is an example of first degree SA block. Second degree SA block is further classified as Mobitz type 1 SA block and Mobitz type 2 SA block. Mobitz type 1 SA block is characterized by progressive prolongation of SA conduction with intermittent failure of impulses to conduct to surrounding atrial tissue. No P waves appear for one beat and the sequence begins again. There is a phenomenon called group beating that means grouping of PQRS complex with progressively shortened PP interval followed by a pause and the pause is less than twice the shortest cycle. If you take this as an exa example, this is a PP interval and compared to this PP interval that is around 23 small boxes, next PP interval is around 21 small boxes and followed by a pause and then the sequence begins again. So, this pass is less than twice the shortest PP interval. So, this is an example of Mobitz type 1 block. Mobitz type 2 block is characterized by fixed PP interval that is no change in SA node conduction before and after the pass. The pass is multiple of preceding PP interval. Let us take this example. So, compared to this PP interval, this PP interval is equal followed by a pass over here and the pass is an exact multiple of the preceding PP interval. So, this is an example of Mobitz type 2 SA block. Third degree or complete SA block which is manifest as no P waves with long pauses leading to ectopic atrial or ventricular rhythms. So, if you see there is a P wave over here and next P wave comes over here. So, there is a long pause over here. This is an example of third degree or complete SA block. Summary, electrical activation of the heart normally originates in the SA node. If SA node is dysfunctional or suppressed, other subsidiary pacemakers may initiate electrical activation. Subsidiary pacemakers discharge at a slower rate. If the depolarization begins in the SA node of the heart, it is said to be in sinus rhythm. Bradycardia is defined as heart rate less than 60 beats per minute and results from either failure of impulse initiation or impulse conduction. Tachycardia occurs when the heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute. Junctional rhythm originates in the AV junction and it is identified based on the rate, QRS width and morphology of P waves. Junctional P waves can be inverted P wave and it comes before or after the QRS complex or it may be a hidden P wave. Sinus pause or arrest is the failure of SA node to discharge. SA exit block is due to intermittent failure in conduction of sinus impulse into atria. SA block is graded into 3 degrees, first degree SA block, second degree SA block which is further classified into type 1 Mobitz block and type 2 Mobitz block and third degree SA block. These are my references. Thank you.